have no ill effect. Right now, saturate her, Lord God, in your presence. I thank you for the passion she presses in no matter what. Lord, I thank you for that passion increasing. It's increasing, God. Saturate you. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for re revealing the things that have been hidden. Some things that have been hidden. But God is going to show you. Oh, we are in love with the King in this place where heaven meets us. in us. Wow. I love when God, he does this. I just looked at what I titled today. I had forgotten. Divine visitations. <laughs> like, wow, that was news to me. Genesis 21, and the Lord visited. Because the Lord visited... <laughs> And the Lord visited Sarah, and the Lord visited Hannah, and the Lord visited Elizabeth through Mary, through Jesus. The Lord visited Elizabeth through, through, through. <laughs> and the Lord visited us. Genesis 21, 1. And the Lord visited Sarah. As he had said, stop right there. The Lord visited Sarah as he had said. The Lord visited us as he has said over and over and over. The Lord is visiting you. It is the visitation of the Lord that is transforming you. His visitation becomes a habitation and he is visiting you. And he is also, he will, he will habitate your presence, literally transform and cause you to walk in this way all the time. So it's not just a little visitation that comes and goes, but it's a habitation. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. He visited her as he had said, and he has said, he, he, he spoke previously. And he said, I'm going to let this come to pass. He already promised he already promised the son. He already promised her the promises of God. He's already promised you the promises of God. He is visiting you to remind you of his promises that they are yes and amen. He is visiting you to remind you, hold on. I am not a man that I should lie. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. For those of you that have your Bibles open, and if you don't, you're hearing it anyway. I'm reading it from the Word. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. I couldn't get past that phrase. It's only half a scripture, but it's a whole scripture. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a whole truth. Just midstream, but it's a whole truth. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. And the Lord is visiting us and he is doing it as he has spoken. All things are possible for those who believe. For Sarah conceived and she bore Abraham a son in his old age. There is nothing too difficult. She bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him at that set time, at that right set time, at that moment, at the time that God has ordained. God spoke it to you. He's already spoken it. He visits you. He, he allows his visitations to be poured out in this such a beautiful manner. But at that appointed time, 
that promise comes to pass. This promise came to pass at the appointed time. <clears throat> Verse 3, and Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac, which we know means laughter, which God is pouring out his laughter, <laughs> which is like medicine. Then Abraham he circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old as God has commanded him. And Lord, let our hearts be so circumcised. Let our hearts be so pruned and cut, Lord, and, and, and anything that isn't of you, let it be just cut and pruned. And Father God, we just want our hearts to be so sharp and in love and focused and pure for you. So yes, circumcise our hearts. Yes. Because you're about ready to pour out such an incredible blessing of which you've already promised us. And we want to be good receivers and ready to receive that outpouring and not stuck in some kind of an offense or stuck in some situation and not able to see that pouring out of the Lord, that time of visitation. We don't want to be distracted. She could have been distracted. Sarah could have been distracted. She wasn't distracted. Now, Abraham, he was 100 years old when his son Isaac was born to him. We know that's impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And with Sarah, God, Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She may have laughed in unbelief in a future, future previous chapter, but it wasn't to the point to where God was upset because he knows our hearts. And now she is saying, oh, God has made me laugh and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham? Who would have said that Abraham and Sarah, that Sarah would nurse children? Who would have said? Who would have known? Except for that God is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. He is all present, and he is almighty God, and he will move on our behalf, and he does. Who would have said you would bore a child in your old age? But God. The Lord visited. The Lord visited Sarah. Let's go over to 1 Samuel. First Samuel 2. Because the Lord visited Hannah. 1 Samuel 2 and 21. And the Lord visited Hannah. The Lord visited Hannah. The Lord kept saying that phrase over and over and over to me. The Lord visited, and the Lord visited, and the Lord visited. So I started looking up scriptures of, and the Lord visited, because I know that that's what he was doing for us as a church body. And he clearly, he, he did so, not just in word, but in action. <laughs> and the Lord visited Hannah so that she conceived, and she bore three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the child Samuel grew before the Lord. This precious woman that hung on to the promise of God, that was bitter of soul. When you go to chapter 1, verse 10, before she had become pregnant with Samuel, her first, she was, she was in bitterness of soul. Samuel 1, 10. She was in bitterness of soul, and she prayed to the Lord, and she wept in anguish. Let your anguish be turned to God's glorious bliss, his delight, his joy. But in that anguish, she made a vow. O oh, Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant, your bondservant, your willful servant, and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. She fulfilled that vow. You know, Hannah spoke in her heart, and only her lips moved. 
She was misunderstood, but not by God. Verse 17, Eli answered, and he said, go in peace. The God of Israel grant your petition with which you have asked. God visited her. She had that child. Hannah conceived, verse 20, in the process of time, at God's appointed time. She conceived, and she bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, saying, because I've asked, from, I've asked for him from the Lord. Because... I asked for him from the Lord. I receive. She named him Samuel. What have you asked for from the Lord? Because at that appointed time, at that time of visitation, God is pouring out his promises. They are yes and amen. And I felt very strongly that phrase, and the Lord visited, just kept on jumping out at me this week. And I knew God wanted to speak through that phrase. And he showed me how in with Sarah, with Hannah, and I want, and let's, let, let's go to, uh, let's see, is it Luke? I think it's in Luke. Yeah, it's Luke 1. It's in Luke 1 and verse 41. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary. You know, Mary was obviously with child. Jesus was in her womb. And it, and it happened. It happened. It will happen, church. That which you're believing for. It will happen. And it happened when Elizabeth heard. There's a sound that is, that is released in the atmosphere of heaven. This is the atmosphere of heaven. This is holy ground. God poured out his spirit. This is the atmosphere. There's a sound. Sounds that are released. Sounds that are heard. Elizabeth heard. She heard the greeting of Mary. And the babe just in her womb just leapt. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Which means, and the Lord visited Elizabeth, even before he was born. That which was in Mary's womb was already being proactive. We know he was before, present, and always will be. But even within the womb, what is it that you have within your womb? What is it that you have within your spirit? What is God deposited? Because that is speaking. And it's ministering to somebody. Her womb was ministering to another woman. And the babe leapt. John the Baptist, literally, in, her, in, in his mother's womb, was just leapt. Why? Because of the sound of Mary's greeting. There's a visitation that comes about when you let what God has deposited on the inside of you be released. When you speak the language of heaven, when you have eyes to see and ears to hear, that the heaven, that, that God's, God's realm of heaven in you is being released to somebody else, there's a visitation that happens. You may or may not know about it, but there's a visitation. People are changed. Elizabeth was changed. John the Baptist, even in, in the womb, was changed. Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords, was already at work. What is he doing in us? He's in us. He's at work. He's in you, and he's at work. What is he doing? Sometimes we just, we, we need to think about these things. We need to slow down and think about these things because there's such depth, truth, that we can miss the potential of what we carry. It's the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead, living in us. That's powerful because if he's living in us, and we know he is the eternal one, we know that he is the everlasting king, right? We, we know he is, he is faithful and true, 
right? We know he's the righteous one. We know, we know he's the wonderful counselor, everlasting, everlasting father, prince of peace. He's living on the inside of us. So is there anything too difficult for the Lord? No. Not at all. You know, we can go back, and I guess we will, in Genesis 18. I wanted to start with, and the Lord visited Sarah, because that's when I was reading, it jumped out at me. And I knew God was saying, the visitation of the Lord, and that it is a corporate, a corporate visitation, a visitation of the Lord. I knew it wasn't just for me, a visitation of the Lord, and I'm in awe of what he did, because he literally let that word come to pass, like already, and I know there's more to it, but their visitation, wow, thank you, Lord, we want more. We want more, Lord. So in, in Genesis 18, and this is when Sarah laughed, by the way. This is, this, is when the, this is when there were some visitors that came to see um, Abraham, <clears throat> basically to tell them to, you know, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah was going to be burned up, and so he had a message for him. But before that, there was a message for Sarah. And here we can see, in, in verse 9, they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? And he, you know, they already knew her name. And he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well advanced in years, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. But we know that with God, all things are possible, and there is no limitation, right, uh, for anything, that is. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, after I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being also old? Well, thank God she said that, because it gives some of us, like, a free pass. <laughs> And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Shall I surely, he says, shall, shall I surely bear a child since I'm, why did she say that? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Yes, she denied it. But that's okay. God said, no, you did laugh. We'll drop it at that. <laughs> The point is, is at the appointed time, at the appointed time, Sarah's coming, or the Lord's coming with this, with this son. He's coming to Sarah, bring forth this son. Wow, Lord, we believe. And our laugh is a laugh of joy and an expectation, not of unbelief. When we laugh, it's because we're in awe of you. When we laugh, it's the laughter that you've been pouring out. It's like little children just giddy before their father, and their father is so good. Amen. Lord, I thank you that even as you have so surrounded us in this place today, in a realm of heaven that we want to be so careful that we don't move too fast or too slow, we hear or move according to your spirit. And, of course, it's easy as, it's easy as people that know how to do church to just move, turn the page, next note, next point, move, 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 move. But we're not doing that. No, we want to hear your spirit. We want to hear your voice. We want, to, we want to know what you're saying because this is a divine outpouring. This is a divine moment right now, and we acknowledge it, and we thank you. And I love how you were, oh, you're previous. You, you tell me before, divine visitation. As I'm reading, you're like, and the Lord visited, and the Lord visited. I couldn't get off that scripture half a scripture, and the Lord visited. I'm like, yes, and you continue to visit. You continue to pour out your spirit. Little did I know what you were going to do today. Thank you, Lord, for your outpouring. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I know what God is saying. I do believe one of the things he's saying, he's encouraging us to say, hang on. Believe me. Believe me that my word is coming to pass. I know he is saying that. He wants to encourage us. Hang on. The word of the Lord shall never return unto you void. Just hang on. The time of visitation. And, and I love that he's pouring out 
His Spirit, He's visiting us. He's, you know, we know we live in that state of habitation, but there are also times where is there's, there are tangible visitations. You can't deny them. And I do believe this day was one of them. We can't deny what God just did. It's beautiful. He did it. He led us there. And, you know, he showed us. He brought us in. It was an invitation. And there's so much that's, that happened. And some you may understand and know. Others, other things you'll know as time goes on, you'll be like, I'm, I feel different. I feel changed. But I do believe God is encouraging us. Hang on. Hang on. Believe me. Don't look at the situation. Believe me. Because I'm working it out. Right? The angel, this is Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encamps around all of those who fear him, and he delivers them. We, we fear the Lord. The angels of the Lord, they circle, they encamp. They encamp all around us. The angels of the Lord are encamped. They're encamped. You mean like they're literally just circulating all around us? They're camped all around us? Yes. The angel of the Lord encamps. All around, those who fear him, and delivers them. You shall be delivered. Your family shall be delivered. The Lord is looking for the one that will carry his spirit, just like Mary carried Jesus. And Elizabeth and John the Baptist were affected because Mary walked in because Jesus walked in. When we walk in, Jesus walks in. And others are affected because we carry the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. We carry that same spirit within our spirits. When we walk in, people change. Well, they have the opportunity to change because we have the Spirit of God. So don't throw your pearls to the swine and know where to throw your pearls, know where to and how to speak and with whom, but never underestimate the fact that the Spirit of God in you is speaking and he is speaking to many and he's speaking to bring those divine visitations because you carry the King of glory. You carry our heavenly Father, the Spirit of God, beyond what we can comprehend fully. But yet, we grasp what we can. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you, because he trusts in you. Because we trust, because we trust in the Lord, he will keep us in perfect peace. And, and we need to remind ourselves of that perfect peace. And if you don't have perfect peace right now, it means your mind is not stayed on the Lord. It's pretty simple. But it's also simple to get it back on track. Just get your mind back on the Lord. Just get your mind back on the Lord. It's a, it is that simple. That, I, that scripture in Isaiah 26, 3 is a powerful scripture because he says perfect peace. It's not just a little bit of peace, but I mean perfect. And the, the world would try to oppose you with that per perfect peace trying to rob you of that perfect peace, but all you have to do is keep your mind on the Lord because you do love him, and he will keep your mind set, steadied, and perfectly in peace with him, which is such a promise because you don't know, like God's visitation, like right now, like this outpouring, right? You don't know. We don't always know when he's going to do that, but we know we can keep our mind in perfect peace. We know that in that perfect peace, there's joy. We know that we can occupy until he comes. We know that we stand and hold our ground. We know that he is with us. He never leaves us. But that outpouring, stand, perfect peace. Keep your mind set on him and expect the visitations. Ask for the visitations. Hannah asked for this blessing to have this son. She didn't only have a son. The Lord visited her again. Remember, we just read it. After Samuel, then the Lord visited her again, and she had more children because the Lord visited her. God doesn't just visit you once. It's a continual visitation. God wants to continue to pour out his spirit. He wants to continue with his divine outpourings, and I believe this is something that we can walk in all the time, and we do. We walk in God's incredible, tangible presence all the time, and it's beautiful when he does a corporate move as he did today. And the last scripture is 2 Corinthians 1.20. 2 Corinthians 1.20.
and that is that all the promises of God are in him, are yes, and in him are amen. All the promises of God. So whatever promise that you have that you're believing God for, they're yes in him, and they are amen in him. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says so. Amen. We will not waver. We're not going to waver from the promises of God, are we? We're not going to shift. We're not going to waver from any promise. God has promised us many, many things. And the Lord will grant those to come to pass. Let's just pray in the spirit for a moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the time of visitation. Thank you that you are visiting us. Thank you, Lord God, for your incredible, tangible presence. Thank you, Lord God, that, Lord, we have become, Lord, just a habitation for the Lord. And you're constantly, you, you just, you pour out. And, and it's like this, we're in all. We're just in all. But, but there's a tangible, tangible presence. The Shekinah glory of the Lord, it's a heavy weight. It's a heavy weight. And, and it's a beautiful heavy weight. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I am my beloved's. He is mine. Thank you, Father. I am my beloved's. And you said, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. I am my beloved's. He is mine. Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things Amen. and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Third John 2. I speak that over them right now. They prosper in all things. And they be in health. Even as their soul prospers. Even as your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. You've become fully saturated in him. Prosperous in him. You're being sanctified. You're being, you're being made new. Your soul is. And God is doing a new work, a new thing. And we receive it. We, we receive it. We say yes. We embrace his work. We embrace his new thing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Abba. Yes, oh God. The word says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto us. Matthew 6, 33. And so we seek first the kingdom of God. We seek first day by day. Lord, we are thankful for what you're doing. So the picture that God is showing me right now is, is that there's, I see what I'm just going to call it like, is his glory, but it's liquid and it's, it's as if he's pouring that into each one of us. And it's as if you are clear, and I can see it going down into your feet, literally filling up, and then going up your legs and just going up throughout your body. Like his glory filling you, filling you. I see it as if you were like as an, like an x-ray or some sort where you were transparent and, and, and I can see the filling of the Lord, but it starts with your feet. And he is saying that he is grounding you in his presence, sta literally stabilizing you in his word, in his glory. And that every step you take, it may seem slower, but it's on God's timing, perfect timing. It may seem slow. You know why? Because it's hard to walk in the glory. But if you just let God do what he needs to do, you will see that his timing is perfect. Then if you just not get impatient and let God do what he needs to do, though it seems slow, it's the weight that you carry that is, which is his glory, his presence, that is producing the promise, the provision, but there is a time, a right time. There was a time that God visited Sarah at the time of his visitation. 
There was a time that he visited Hannah at the time of his visitation. There's a time he visits us at the time of his visitation. My legs feel like lead. If I was to try to move, I would be moving slow. And I know that this is all symbolic of what God is telling us here today. It's not, don't despise the day of small beginnings. It's not that. It's not to get discouraged when it seems like it's taking a long time, when things are moving slow. I'm filling you with my glory. I'm equipping you. I'm sustaining you. I'm providing everything you need. Enjoy the process. We're going to enjoy the glory realm. We're going to enjoy the realm of God's glory. We're going to enjoy the process. For we know that God's word always comes to pass. Amen? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for what you're teaching us. Thank you for what you're speaking, Lord. Thank you that you speak loud and clear. Thank you, Lord, that you speak deep within our hearts, Father God, and we receive it. We adhere to it, and we say yes, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs>